So, in our review area, so we remember where we're at, Paul talked about uh, some Paul's teachers there that he um, were teaching bad things who he said were enemies of the cross. We talked about them last week. The two um, types of uh, false doctrines in the first century that are addressed in the epistles as Paul and others write epistles to correct their bad doctrine is legalism and license. Legalism is you got to add to the cross. The cross by itself isn't sufficient for you to get saved. you got to do a bunch of stuff and live really good. So it's the cross plus you. Where salvation teaches the cross plus nothing. The other extreme was license. The truth, then that's the old pendulum over here, legalism, license. Somewhere in the middle is the truth. License was grace will cover it. It doesn't really matter if you sin. Now that took on various, in the first century, various uh, types of um, doctrines surrounding that. Um, But you see that run rampant in America today, especially in the non-evangelical community of Christianity. You just go along with everything that's politically correct and uh, you just got everybody going to heaven and I would to God that were true. I would to God that were true. I wish I could find some scriptures that would support such a thing because I don't want anybody to go to hell. Uh, Now I'm going to tell you something. There are people that I want off the planet. When Osama bin Laden got uh, killed, I was happy for that. Would to God he'd ask Jesus into his heart first. I don't want anybody in hell. But unfortunately, the Scripture teaches that will happen. So, Paul said there are enemies of the cross. Those two things are still today. Now, why is legalism, well, you're really being religious. Why is that an enemy of the cross? Because legalism, when it teaches you have to depend on yourself, after Paul wrote in this very chapter, Philippians 3, put no confidence in the flesh. But even after that, legalism teaches you've got to do some stuff. Suffice it to say, the largest Christian church in the world just has unbelievable doctrine. I don't know. I can't connect the dots why so many people go. Uh, unbelievable doctrine. Not only do you got to do all the stuff right, but you still got to pay for your own sin for a while in a certain place where they got to light candles and pray out of them. And then you get to go to heaven after you paid your penalty. Um, the reason legalism in any form is an enemy of the cross, it denies the power of the cross. The cross isn't sufficient to get me to heaven. i got to add to it. The reason license is an enemy of the cross is because it teaches me it's okay to sin. It denies the message of the cross that I have died in Romans 6 with Christ to sin. I can't embrace sin if I'm dead to it. Make sense to you? So both extremes are enemies of the cross. So we talked about that last week. Let's get on to this week. Verse 21. Talking in verse 20, he said, Our conversation is in heaven. By the way, most of the time in the, New, in the King James when you see the word conversation, it's not talking about talking. It's talking about what your lifestyle is saying. You know the old saying, what you do speaks a lot. I can't hear a word you're saying. Well, the, usually the Greek word rendered conversation in the New Testament means how are you living your life? What's, what, what's your conduct? And um, here, it's a different Greek word. And I find it interesting in this day and age for that Greek word for conversation is the con- is it means the constitution of a commonwealth. It's a form of government and the laws by which it is administered according to Thayer's Greek Dictionary. In other words, we Christians as those practitioners of Islam have a law we place above the American Constitution. 
With Islam, it's Sharia law. With Christians, it's the law of heaven. The difference is, the founding fathers based their constitution on the scripture. So the fact that we follow the laws of God up until recently in history dovetailed. It was okay because we were following the Constitution. But as the Constitution gets changed by uh, Supreme Court justices who are acting like the writers of law, as it's gotten changed, our message is no longer the same as what we are now told the message of America is. And we have a president who has said one time that Christians need to quit preaching against gay marriage and uh, abortion because it's the law of the land. I think I would to God you weren't so cowardly to discuss radical Islam and so bold to put down the church. But anyway, that's where we are in America. So that's what he's saying here. Our conversation. We take our orders from heaven. Martin Luther said... When they wanted him to recant his writings, Martin Luther said, My conscience is held captive to the Word of God. And that's where every one of us need to be. I always tell people, if you can get God to change His mind on something, I'll change mine. Up until then, unfortunately for them, God said, I am the Lord thy God, I change not. Uh, So good luck with changing God's mind. All right, now, our conversation is in heaven, and then in verse 20 it said, From that heaven is going to come back our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's talking about the return of Jesus. And verse 21 says, When Jesus returns, who, that who being Jesus, shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto His glorious body, according to the working whereby He is able even to subdue all things unto Himself. You know, sin dwells in Romans 6 in the members of these bodies. These bodies are dying, decaying. Uh, We get older. How many of you know you uh, aren't quite as mobile as you were when you were younger? Uh, For you and I, old is 55, 60, whatever. We notice uh, certain things drop off. For um, athletes, it's 30. 35. They can't do what they used to do in pro football and in other sports, in basketball. I mean, it's amazing to me to think they're old in their 30s in the sports world. But the reason they can't do what they used to do because we live in a decaying body. It grows old. And one day, if the Lord tarries, it will decay to the point of death. And then it will decay in the ground until it returns to dust. These are vile bodies. When Jesus returns from heaven, He's going to change all that. He's going to fashion these bodies like unto His glorious body. I like the sounds of that. Alright? So, one of my favorite scriptures, 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not appear yet appear what we shall be. Right now we're saved. Right now we're God's children. But what we don't have right now is what's going to be. 